if you look at the growth and stability plan, which was set up to underpin the Eurozone, that even countries that are not in the Eurozone, like Britain, have to comply with the growth and stability plan, where it states that borrowing must not exceed 3% of uh, GDP. Borrowing in Britain now is 13%. You know, we, we got our warning letter from the Commission years ago. We got the warning letter from the ECB a few months ago. We've had a warning letter from the IMF, for God's sake. But, you know, a whole lot of countries in the Eurozone have breached every aspect of the growth and stability plan. So the whole thing is now a, a house of cards that is just wobbling. And unless we get this right, we're, we're looking at a disaster. You know, I was saying, potential 28 million unemployed. I mean, people are losing their jobs, losing their homes, almost on a daily basis. And this is the big test for Europe. They've got to get this right. And they've got to get uh, the economy back on track and quickly before uh, you know, we have a disaster in our hands, which could lead to the collapse of the Eurozone. And the growth and stability factor is interesting because, you know, you know, like France and Germany didn't comply with it in 1999 and 2005. Had to be reformed, you know, new reforms were run in 2005 haven't been tested in, in you know, the current financial situation that we're in. And I mean, you know, you know, the, the, we are basically in uncharted territory in terms of the economy here. And I think you're absolutely spot on in your analysis. It does have to be, it does have to be Europe's um, priority in the, in the forthcoming parliament and uh, for the commissioners as well. Um, I think Europe has a huge role to play in terms of banking regulation is a purpose. I think in terms of closing down tax loopholes and you know ending tax avoidance as well is also a huge role you know, play there too. Also in LDLs we mentioned earlier, you know, creation job creation, you know millions of jobs in Britain depend on our trade with the EU, it's having sixty percent of our trade is dependent on the EU too. It's all so intertwined as well. I think for Europe's own credibility too, voters, that have, it also has to be something to be taken a proactively. I think, you know, I think um, the G20 in, in London a few months ago, you know, the countries working together with, uh, together with you, know, uh, China, you know, President of China and President Obama and stuff like that as well. I think, I think for Europe to retain credibility during the current crisis, it, it, you're right, it, that does have to be a priority. I'd like to just add that um, I, I suppose none of us want regulation. I mean, it's true and maybe a bit. Uh, um, suppose it is certainly not regulation for regulation's sake, but regulation, particularly of the, the banking sector, um, I think is necessary and has to be done at European level because there's so much money moving backwards and forwards. I mean, within the Eurozone and in our part of the Eurozone, that if you don't have strong capital requirements directed, if you don't um, and supervised credit rating agencies, if, if you don't do that at European level, then it's, we're, we're not going to, to get away from the, the black hole into which finance fell because of toxic debt, you just, you just have to do that.